you know, we were uh, obviously recognized Cortland and Wade and two very deserving guys. Obviously, Cortland's certainly coming back from injury. Unfortunately, as a pro, sometimes you got to come back from season ending injuries. And the way he approached his rehab and the way he approached his comeback was admirable. Um, as good as anybody I've ever seen going through that. And then certainly with Wade, I was aware of it like Coach, Coach Vic. Um, and he handled it like a warrior. You know, he's very private about it. Um, he certainly would tell me when he was going. And he'd just slip away, get his treatment, and come back and keep, keep trucking. And so uh, it was in a, you know, I, I, I admired how he handled it. And it should be an inspiration to everybody that's going through a real serious deal like he did. He was in our prayers, and thankfully to this point, uh, hopefully he's got it, got it knocked. So with that being said, that'll be the last opening I'll ever give you guys because <laughs> I'm sure you got other things to ask me about. Pat, what's just been your impression of how Cortland has kind of you know, handled the last six weeks? I'm sure, you know, obviously, like more catches, but what's just been your impression of kind of how he's done? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, all skill players want, want to touch the football, right? And I think... The one thing about being a pro is understanding that you got to try to do what you can to, you know, help the team win the game. And, um, you know, I've been imp I've just been impressed with him as a pro. I think this is I've, I've spoken of him often in that regard, and nothing has changed. What about just your because I think Dalvin talked about it, your receivers' willingness to be participants in the in the run game. Yeah, I think I, I don't I don't think that's that's anything new. I think I think. You have to do that as a receiver. If you're going to have a total offense, you know, other than a quarterback, um, everybody as part of their job description involves blocking, you know. And sometimes when you run the ball as much as we did the other day, they, they do more than pass catching. And, um, you know, I think all of our receivers have embraced that. Trey Hendrickson has a sack in what, nine straight games for them. How much do they move him around looking for matchups? Uh, yeah, he typically plays on the edges, um, but they have two very good edge players. Um, he'll move around at times, but um, he's a good player. He's a really good player, and the fact that he's getting production is no surprise. I watched him do it when he was uh, at the Saints, and so for him to continue on with his career, I know he was a big signing for them free agent-wise. Uh, it's no surprise. play good ball when we get down there. You know, I think, um, you know, there were a lot of things for the number crunchers that worked well last last week. Um, but, you know, the, you know, the devil is in the details when it gets comes to scoring. And each week it plays out differently. Um, you know, we were able to run the ball in. Uh, we threw it in a couple of times. And so when you commit to running it and, you know, and you get those extra yards to score, that's important. That means everybody's doing their job, and then when you do the same thing, throwing it like we did, um, you know, I, I, I just think it's just doing things well, whether you run it or pass it, and we found a way to do that. Noah's leading you guys in the receptions this year. What has he shown out there, and maybe what more do you want to see of him in the next four weeks? Just keep doing what he's doing. I, I think, and then you always want to try to get the most out of every passing play, just like running play. So, you know, catch the football. You know, first off, run good crisp routes, catch the football, and then, you know, and then do what you can to extend to play, break tackles, and, and get some yaks. You know, so just keep continuing to work on uh, the things that are important to his position. How's it coming along as a blocker? He's doing a good job. You know, obviously he's part of uh, some of the run consistency that we've had, and I think he's doing a good job there as well. Teddy uh, said, you know, winning the game is the most important thing. Yeah. But the target or the the production with Tim and Cortland has been a little bit down. So, uh, how do you balance that out? How how do you get them more? In some games it's going to happen the other way. If unfortunately one of these games doesn't work out, and we throw it more than we run it, somebody's going to spin back and say, "How come you didn't play it like you did against Detroit?" So, I think the challenge is to win the game, and I think um, even though they all want to have an impact by touching the ball. We're fortunate here. We got a roster full of guys that understand it's about winning the game. And at some point, they're going to get more targets than the law allows and make the best of it. When, Ted, you, Ted, have Ted, one, Ted. when you have one, Coach, your third down conversion rate has been through the roof. And then the loss has just been dramatically different. What have you seen in the Bingo. Loop? Can you do third down conversion as well and be a predominant running team? Are you finding that identity? I think it just goes back to situational football. You know, obviously. 
you know, you want to do what you can to stay on the field. I think the one thing that's evident about third down conversions is the shorter they are, the, the better chance you have of converting them. We would all agree earlier in the season, we had a lot of long yardage third downs, which, you know, for the number crunchers, you know, they, you've got a less likely percentage of converting, even if you compete the pass. Um, so when you got shorter, shorter yardage third downs, your percentage just naturally goes up. Uh, there are more plays in your playbook uh, that can get four yards as opposed to eight. Uh, you have the ability to run the ball if you want, which we've done, which helps. Quarterback can scramble, you know, so there's more, there's more available to you when you do a better job on first, second down. Uh, Ted, you know, Vic was talking about Teddy's demeanor being the same every day. How important is it for that at that position? And does it remind you of any other quarterbacks you've had? Yeah, again, I, I steer away from uh, comparisons. Uh, but I would say he is very consistent in his approach. Um, he does a good job of leading the guys, you know, having an impact on guys uh, emotionally. And uh, I think, I really think the quarterback needs to be consistent. If you ride the roller coaster of emotions all the time, then you can get caught on the wrong side of that at times. And I think a consistent uh, approach is important, although he's very stern and he's a, he's, he makes everybody aware of the things that he thinks need to either get better or get fixed. Yeah, what about comparing Teddy to himself from the first couple of years? What you've seen growth, why they got all season? Yeah, I'm going to dump that question too. I, he's, a more, he's a more veteran version of himself, uh, in my opinion. He's a more veteran, uh, better version of the Teddy that I knew. Um, he's just seen and done more things. Um, he's able to talk about more things that he likes or dislikes, calls to avoid, calls to veer toward, um, and I think that's good. Hey, you, uh, you've, said, you've said a few times, you, know, you often say number crunchers. Beyond points, what numbers are important to you? Just points and wins. Yeah, the, the important thing is to win, and then certainly um, when you score points, because we're all charged with scoring points. We had nine drives the other day. We scored on six of them. That, I, I think that's pretty good for the numbers guys, you know, and I think that's what you that's what you want to do is, is score points and ultimately score one more than your opponent, which is a win. The rest of it, the rest of it helps tell the story maybe a little bit, but those what I'm getting at. are there any in there that you prefer? Well, all the efficiency, all the efficiency ones are important. Um, you, you can, there's a long list of them, right? I mean, we, we scored in two minutes before the half, right? We ended the game with the ball and got a score, right? The one that we didn't do so well, we had a, a series backed up there where we went a three and out. We can't do that. But uh, we were third downs were good, five for five in the red zone. I mean, all that tells the story. But ultimately, ultimately you want to score one more point than your opponent. That's important, at least. And then uh, win the game. Do you the word, those guys? are the important pieces. Use the word stern and more stern to describe Teddy Bridgewater. Like, how does that come across in the huddle? What word did I use? Stern. Stern. Yeah. Like, how does that come across in meetings, in the locker room, on the field, et cetera? Just naturally being around somebody, you can see um, so how somebody says something or how it's expressed. Do you think the NFL's changed to a degree where it's smarter to have two equal running backs rather than one bell cow guy? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it's important that you have two or three runners uh, that can, can produce at a high level and do it on first, second, and third down. I think that's very important. Um, you don't see one guy going front to back, carrying the ball 25 or 30 times a game, um, pass protecting. You know, I think, I think it takes a room. And whether that room involves two or three guys, I think it's important. Because at some point, even if you have a bell cow guy, um, very rarely do they last now 17 games where somebody's got to fill in and play at a high level. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Uh,